If you were to search for high yielding investments using a stock screener and sort the results by highest yield, you'll no doubt come across an ETF in particular that's been making a lot of waves in the income investing realm. Today we're going to take a look at the Simplify Volatility Premium ETF, ticker symbol SVOL. This video is without a doubt my most requested video in this channel's history, and I can understand why. SVOL is an ETF that's unlike anything else that exists. It's a first of its kind fund that's also one of the hardest ETFs to understand because it's an actively managed fund that uses multiple strategies simultaneously to generate its returns. So let's take a look into SVOL and see if its extremely high dividend yield is worthy of consideration for people seeking high monthly income. For starters, according to Simplify's website, SVOL seeks to provide investment results before fees and expenses that correspond approximately one-fifth to three-tenths the inverse of the performance of the SIBO Volatility Index, or VIX, short-term futures index while also seeking to mitigate extreme volatility. SVOL aims to provide an attractive income stream and source of diversification while seeking to avoid risks inherent with other income-producing asset classes. The fund short VIX position provides investors an optimized exposure for monetizing the premium in the VIX futures market. A modest option overlay budget is then deployed into VIX call options to help protect against adverse moves in VIX. SVOL recently turned two years old back in May, so it's still a very young ETF with not a lot of past performance that we can take a look at. But this ETF does offer investors a dividend yield of over 17%, which makes it one of the highest yielding dividend ETFs in existence. Additionally, SVOL pays investors on a monthly basis, which is always better, but it doesn't mean we should always ignore a fund that might be of excellent quality that pays a quarterly dividend as opposed to monthly. Looking at this ETF's holdings, we can see that SVOL does a few different things to generate income. The main strategy this fund uses is by selling futures on the VIX Volatility Index. It also holds a combination of treasury bills and sometimes short-term bonds in its portfolio. So let's go a little deeper into this fund to see how it works. The largest thing that drives this ETF's returns are the options that it uses on the VIX. VIX is the ticker for the SIBO Volatility Index, which is a popular measure of the stock market's expectation of volatility. Volatility measures the frequency and magnitude of the price movements in the market. The VIX Index is recognized as being the gauge of the US equity market volatility. If you go to any popular stock website like CNBC, they usually have it on their homepage. What's important to keep in mind is that when volatility is high, then the VIX usually rises, and when the VIX rises, then stock prices usually fall. When the VIX index falls, then share prices in the market typically rise. It's not a perfect inverse relationship, there can be days where the VIX was down, as so were stocks. But the majority of the time, they are correlated with each other. A key pattern to recognize is that when the VIX jumps upward, then the share price of SVOL falls. Let's look at the year-to-date performance of both SVOL and the VIX. You can see in January, SVOL kept on rising while the VIX was falling. In February, there were a few spikes, but then in March, there was some really sizable spikes. This caused the share price of SVOL to drop into negative territory before eventually recovering, and it's now up for the year thanks to VIX continuing to fall for the last few months. Let's look at the 5-year performance of the VIX alongside SVOL for at least the amount of time this ETF has existed. If we expand the performance, there should be one thing that immediately stands out. Look at the major spike that happened back in March of 2020 because of the pandemic. Obviously, SVOL didn't exist back then, but you have to wonder, what would happen to the share price of SVOL if there was another large spike in the VIX like this? If we go back even further, look at how high VIX went up during the 2008 financial crisis. There were several massive spikes in late 2008, and since we know that when that happens, the share price of SVOL goes down, I'm just wondering how bad this ETF would be affected. According to their website, SVOL does provide some protection against this. A modest option overlay budget is deployed into VIX call options to help protect against adverse moves in VIX. The question worth asking though is how effective this strategy is going to be in extreme cases, like what happened in 2020 and 2008. And unfortunately, because this fund is so new, we just don't know how SVOL is going to react when there's another huge crisis in the stock market. This year so far, SVOL is currently up about 4.2%, which is due to the VIX index falling. If we factor in the dividends alongside that share price appreciation for the year, we can see that as of the making of this video, it's provided a return of roughly 14.36%. If we look at the dividend distribution history for SVOL, we can see that it's remained pretty consistent. This fund also holds treasuries, which provide two main functions. The first is to provide the collateral that's needed for the fund to write its futures contracts. They also help provide some of the income that goes into the dividends that this fund pays. Even though both treasuries and short-term bonds are offering higher yields now thanks to rising interest rates, they still don't come close to covering a good portion of SVOL's 17% monthly dividend. So even though they do contribute to the dividends, it's not by a large percentage. It should also be noted that according to Simplify's website that the dividends are taxed as a mixture of ordinary income and long-term capital gains. At the bottom of this fund's page, it shows exactly how every monthly dividend has been taxed up to this point. So far, everything has been taxed as ordinary income, just like the dividends you'd receive from a real estate investment trust, for example. 
So far, everything about this fund is looking pretty interesting. It's an exciting fund for a few different reasons. Obviously, the high monthly dividends that it pays is extremely attractive, but SVAL could be considered somewhat uncharted territory. When it comes to high-yielding investments, we have a lot of different options, including closed-end funds, mortgage REITs, exchange-traded notes, as well as various covered call funds that use options on different indexes. But SVAL is an entirely different kind of investment that's in a league of its own. This fund generates its returns off market volatility. There's no way to directly invest in the VIX index other than a couple of ETFs that exist, including the ProShares VIX Midterm Futures ETF. So SVAL truly is in a category of its own. Investors who want to diversify their dividend portfolios even more might find this ETF to be an attractive addition to their portfolios. But there are a couple concerns I have regarding the long-term performance of this fund that we just don't know the answers to yet. If we enter a period when there's a lot more dramatic jumps in the VIX index, is that going to eat away at this fund's value? What's going to happen to this fund's share price if we go through another 2008 recession? At this time, we really don't know what to expect under these conditions. It should be noted that this ETF has only existed during a time when volatility remained consistently high. Between 2012 and 2020, volatility was quite a bit lower for the market. Now that the VIX is going down again, what are the dividends going to look like coming from this fund? It's worth pointing out that already this fund doesn't pay the same amount of dividends that it used to. In 2021 and 2022, SVAL was paying as much as 39 cents per share per month in dividends. For over a year now though, SVAL has been consistently paying 32 cents per share, with the exception of December of 2022 when it paid a little extra. When volatility goes back down, what are the dividends going to look like coming from this ETF? The management team at Simplify has addressed some of these concerns, saying that it will still be able to provide good income. And they've assured that this fund does have features that'll protect it, including its tail hedges that are also in this fund, but it remains to be seen how effective these features are going to be under intense situations. At the same time though, when I look at the total return provided by SVAL, I can't help but get excited. If we look at SVAL's performance since inception, we can see it's currently down over 11% since May 14th of 2021. The S&P 500, on the other hand, is currently up over 6% since that same day. On the surface, it looks like the S&P 500 is crushing SVAL, but when we look at the total return with dividends being reinvested, we can see the exact opposite is true. SVAL's been able to provide a total return of 22.6% compared to the S&P 500's 11.72%. In the two years SVAL's existed, it's managed to crush the market by a pretty sizable majority up to this point. But ultimately, past performance is not a guarantee of future performance. If you're interested, feel free to check out this video Simplify recently uploaded on their channel in which they interview SVAL's fund manager. It provides a lot of good information on their fund that might benefit you if you're interested. It's my opinion that SVAL is a fund that should be viewed as a higher risk holding that I wouldn't recommend making the biggest position in your portfolio, even if you're solely dedicated to income. The best time to buy this fund is when there's a heightened amount of volatility in the market like there was on this day. It's been a great investment so far and hopefully as time goes on, it'll continue to remain strong going into the future. But with that being said, that's going to wrap up our look today at SVAL. If you're interested, feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll find an Excel sheet of all of my holdings updated monthly. Plus, it'll give you access to our Discord channel where we discuss higher yielding types of investments. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you liked what you saw, then feel free to hit that like button below and click subscribe if you want to see higher yielding investing strategy content. Again, thank you all so much for watching today's video and until next time, take care.